So you're on a nice walk out in this snowy wilderness when for some strange reason you're struck with the need to pull out your phone and scroll through Pinterest. When suddenly you find it, the pin that changes everything. In this moment, your coat is so hot, your hands are sweating through their insulated mittens and you think to yourself, I gotta make that. That's when you realize you're in the middle of the wilderness and you dart in all directions trying to find your way home. Suddenly, this mystic forest gremlin that was inevitably going to eat me if I had walked any farther screams, Then where are you going? Pinterest made me do it! Dumb, next time. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Diddy, your friendly neighborhood DIYer and clearly, I'm crazy. Just kidding. Subscribe, join this wonderful DIY community of fun. <laughs> and yes, my DIY friends, this is another episode of Pinterest Made Me Do It, a series that I created where I find pins on Pinterest and I think to myself, I have got to make that. So here we are. Kenobi and I went on a little bit of an adventure this week, so we are not in our usual abode. We adventured out to my mom and stepdad Vince where they live in the middle of nowhere, but they also happen to have a big DIY studio to go play in. <laughs> So this week I am going to be creating my DIY in my mom's studio and that DIY is a beautiful DIY paper lampshade inspired by the marvelous La Vie Pear Tree. After I found this DIY by her, I basically started following all of her social accounts because I just think she is absolutely brilliant. I'm going to link all of her social accounts in my description box. Click on them, go check her out. So with that, La Vie shared this tutorial for this DIY paper lampshade and I'm just drawn to it. I don't know what it is about it. There's just certain DIYs that I come across on Pinterest and I'm like, I just gotta make that. I gotta get it out of my system so I can move on and make other things. So without further ado, let's go make this DIY paper lampshade. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. <laughs> Give me your ball. Give me your ball. Good morning, DIY friends. So, I am up in the DIY studio that belongs to my mom. Say hello, mom. She's here assisting me today. Who's excited? <laughs> we are. No shady business up here. <laughs> Do you want to show everyone your window that you made? Look at that. Look how beautiful that is, and it's in the window. And then another thing we're doing behind the scenes, we'll get to the project, I swear. Um, we have this old Dutch, just a decorative thing. A follower showed this to me and then I reached out to them and it's a new type of paint called mud paint and uh, it's made from mud. So this stuff is a unique clay based paint. So I'm excited because it's supposed to leave a matte finish. I feel like it's a lot like chalk paint. And so I asked them if they would send me some samples so I could try it. And so they sent me China white, which is like this beautiful kind of off white. They sent me rust which I'm very excited to start trying out. They also sent me this little blush color, and then it also comes with a, a clear coat. So, uh, mom's going to be painting this wood frame, which breaks my heart. I think it should stay. She wants to paint it, so I'm not saying anything. We're gonna test it out and uh, let you guys know what we think about it. It's always exciting to try new things. So, let's, uh, let's get to making this paper lampshade. Getting started with this DIY paper lantern, the first and most important element to create are the palm leaf paper fans. Starting with a big roll of craft paper, I'm measuring and creating a rectangle that is 40 centimeters by 60 centimeters. I'm going with the sizes indicated on Flavie's tutorial. You can really make these as big or small as you want, depending on if you want to create a small pendant light or a big one like moi. From there, I marked my halfway point on both axes so that I was left with four equal squares squares inside my rectangle. Okay, here's where my verbal explanation might get a little muddy, but I'm gonna try. At the bottom of my rectangle, I use the center point to measure out 19 centimeters on each side. So 38 centimeters in total, 19 centimeters out on each side from that middle mark. And from both ends of that 38 centimeter line, I traced a bulbous shape that connects to all the edges of my four squares and around the top. Then I simply cut my bulbous shape out using scissors and I was left with something that looked like this. Sort of looks like a mushroom head a little. 
And once you make one, my suggestion is to use this as your template to make nine more because you will need 10 in total. From there, I'm folding my paper in half and making any trims to the sides so that both sides mirror each other perfectly. Working from my center point outward, I'm folding the paper back and forth in an accordion style pattern, keeping the width of the accordion about one centimeter wide. Should we you stuck camera? your tongue out. It's how I work. <laughs> I just kept folding until there was literally no more paper to fold. The trick I found with this is to make sure you keep the folds the same one centimeter each time. This can get a little tricky, but you get the hang of it after a while. If you're not careful, the fold can start to get a bit chunky. And honestly, it looks fine at the end, but it certainly looks better when all the folds are really nice and tight. Once you have one side done, I'm unfolding the first few folds from the middle to help me begin my accordion style folding in the other direction. To really get those folds super creased at the end, I'm using a framing square to push down on the folds, but honestly, you can use anything to do this. You could use scissors, the square was just there and really good for creasing. When you are done, you should have something that looks like this. And now, all you have to do is repeat this step nine more times. Goody. Okay, Dutch window thingy update. Oh, nice, looks good. So you're gonna do a bit light sanding. Give it kind of that antique -y look, kind of like what I'm doing on the fan. It, uh, it, it dries really well though. Like it doesn't feel like a chalk paint. No. That's one thing. It dries very quickly. And it dries really quick, yeah. Okay, that's it good to know. Okay, getting back to the DIY here. Using two millimeter aluminum wire and wire cutters. Mine is a copper color, but ideally you want gold. I just already had this in copper, so you know. I cut 10 16 centimeter length pieces of wire and used a glue gun to secure the wire to the middle fold of my craft palm leaf, leaving half the wire hanging out. I used a little clip to keep the stem part of the paper leaf closed and then using craft tape, which I absolutely love, I tightly taped around the stem to create the palm leaf shape. I love this DIY because you can totally stop here and use these palm leaves as decorations in your home. They are very trendy little additions to shelves, walls, and inside vases, but we have a light to make, so I'm working away to make all 10 here. This part is totally a personal preference and style because you can leave it brown or amp it up with some color. I wanted to give mine a little personality, so using acrylic paint in the color Unbleached Titanium by Liquitex Basics, I'm simply dry brushing the color right onto the leaf, going a little thicker at the base and brushing it out softer towards the end of the palm. That's pretty good. I'm trying that to go good. a little bit thicker at the beginning and then let it kind of yeah. fan out. <laughs> I don't know, that was actually a joke. I'm not trying to paint the entire leaf, I'm just giving it a dry brushed effect. Then using gold spray paint, I'm spraying along the tips of the fan and at the base of the leaf to really add some shading and style. Setting all those aside to dry now, it's time to get started on the electrifying portion of this DIY. <laughs> For my DIY, I'm using this plug-in brass finish pendant socket light. I source this one in particular because of the long metal base at the top, but this particular light came with a black cord. I didn't want my cord to be black, so I sourced this twisted hemp rope, which meant I had to do a little socket surgery. Little tiny screws, I love it so much. Not made for sausage fingers. <laughs> Now, this is actually quite easy, friends. You just need to remove the two screws inside the light socket and pull the entire thing out of the brass cage to which it lived in. From there, you snippety snip the old black cord right off, leaving about an inch of wire connected to the socket itself. Now, taking my hemp cord, I'm pulling back the hemp fabric around the black and white cord, and I'm feeding these wires through the brass base. Using wire strippers, I then removed some black rubber to expose the new copper wire off the socket. And now you just simply twist the new copper wire from the new hemp cord with the old socket and then use electrical tape to cover it up so that no copper wire is exposed. You wanna do this for both the hot and neutral wires. Of course, there are two sides to a light, so before I want to reattach anything, I needed to add my plug. I have this old two-prong plug that is super simple to connect. I just pull off the rubber cover from the plug to expose the inner workings. I fed my two wires from the hemp cord through the rubber cover and connected my hot and neutral cords to each side of the plug, then secured the body back into the rubber cover, and that's it. 
Of course, you should always test the connection to make sure your light works before you screw everything back in place. And aha, look at that, we have power, my friends. Can we just take a minute to say that that light bulb is totally rad, I love it, I sourced it, it was super expensive, but I don't care because I think it's beautiful. <laughs> you only have one bulb, one beautiful bulb. I mean, there's two beautiful bulbs in this studio. <laughs> <laughs> Once both wires were connected, I pushed the socket back into its shell and reattached it with the screws. At this point, the end was near! With the help of crimping pliers, I began wrapping the exposed wire on each paper palm leaf around the long neck of the light socket. Now I'm simply stacking each one on top of each other. To make sure it all stayed in place, I took a smaller gauged wire and wrapped this around the entire base holding all the palm leaves in place. Of course, all my wires were not a unified color story here, so I used gold spray paint to quickly give it all one unified look. Of course, if you use brass wire for everything, you don't need to do this step, but I was working with what I had to save a penny or two. Very cool. Now all that was left was to hang this beautiful light from the ceiling and add your decorative bulb. Look at this magnificent light DIY friends. This DIY turned out so much better than I could have hoped for and I just loved the gold and beige color palette. It literally looked like a piece of art hanging from the ceiling and I am so glad I got this DIY out of my system because it was such a simple creation that anyone could make in a day and sometimes we just need a DIY project like that, am I right? DIY friends, thank you so much for watching this episode of Pinterest Made Me Do It. <laughs> How did I do? Let me know in the comment section below. Go give Levy some love because she is the one that inspired this amazing project. I'll see you next week. Stay creative, stay positive, and keep on DIYing. Bye bye.